the music you know, the city you love. This is Liverpool Live. Right then, we're going to continue our, our conversation that we're having on a Tuesday these days with uh, health, really. Uh, how, uh, you know, to get the best out of yourself in some cases and what are the pitfalls, what are the challenges that certainly face people who are working in the health industry at the moment. Today, we've got Joe Nash. Uh, Joe is, uh, give me, I'll, I'll let you give me your title if that, if you would there, please, Joe, to right. make sure we get it right. Can I just get that microphone angled right towards your mouth so we know exactly what you're saying? Thank you, Joe. Take it away if you would. Uh, so my name is Joe Nash. I'm the clinical nurse manager based at the City Walking Centre in the middle of Liverpool. Right. For, for me, uh, as I say, going back to, you know, when the, I think it was probably like early 2000s and the walking centres started appearing all over the place. And I always remember because my daughter had stigmatism in her eye uh, when she was born. And the, it was incredible. The, the service was unbelievable. You'd walk in, everything was fine. And I know when I'd been injured myself, when I had gout, you know, I mean, I managed to go down, not a problem. But these days, the pressures are just unbelievably overwhelming, aren't they? Um, tell us a little bit about what it's like working in a walk-in centre at the moment. Um, obviously, the pressures everywhere across the NHS um, are really high. Uh, within the walk-in centres at the moment, we are seeing our demand increasing, uh, certainly in the volume of number of patients that present, but also in the acuity of the patients that are presenting at the moment. Obviously, we know there are difficulties with patients getting into their GPs, patients you know, don't want to go to A&E because we know they're overstretched and they're very busy. Um, so trying to access some sort of health care is really difficult at the moment. And mm. walk-in centres, because of the nature that you can just walk in, uh, we are seeing a lot of patients from a lot of different sort of specialities that, you know, might require different uh, types of care presenting to the walk-in centre simply because it's one of the only places you can be seen face-to-face. -face. Right. You mentioned there about uh, the numbers of people mm. going to a walk-in centre are up. Now, we know there's obviously staffing issues within the, the NHS at the moment, but are we talking about even if the staffing issues weren't a problem, there seems to be an increase? Oh, there's absolutely an increase. Um, I've worked in the walk-in centres for 20 years, almost, um, and certainly over the last few years that demand has increased. But even in the last few months, we've just really? seen the numbers uh, go up um, week on week. And I think our last uh, count was a 5% increase in the last right. week alone. Well, what is that attributable to? Um, again, to, you know, there's not enough GP, so there's a limited number of appointments. So they people, go into the walking yeah, centres, so, yeah, know, right. Difficulty trying to even get through to the GPs of a morning. Um, so, you know, the NHS 111 service is, uh, you know, is also busy, so sometimes patients are waiting for callbacks, and while they're waiting, they'll just decide to come to a walking centre instead. Right. Um, so, yeah, the numbers are uh, creeping up, and I imagine over the next few months that will certainly continue and is there at this moment in time like an average wait time or is it a bit of a piece of string kind of conversation Ooh, that it really was? depends um on the time of day that you present um, if you're going to go to a walk-in center uh, my sort of only sort of piece of advice is to go as early as possible in the day we are open yeah. from eight o'clock in the morning um most of our sites are open till eight o'clock in the evening and some are open till nine o'clock um but obviously, the later into the day, that waiting time does tend to creep up. So generally, of a morning, you know, you may be seeing within an hour or two, but towards the afternoon, we are certainly seeing waiting times going up to sort of six hours, which is not ideal for anybody. No. So what should be the procedure? I mean, because I, inevitably, you do get some people who are turning up at these places, and you think, well, I'm going to set there's a, there are different options you could have taken mm -hmm. here. But if you're feeling a little bit under the weather. What should your, if you, you're a little bit under the weather and you know that it's not something that you think, well, this is seasonal, I know I'm going to get this, mm -hmm. you're not feeling right, whatever. What what should be the procedure then? Okay. So at the moment, Mercy Care are running a Help Us Help You company, help with these symptoms at that time. There's also the care at the chemist, so you can access some of these over-the-counter medications for free if you're uh, eligible for them, um, as long as you're registered with that pharmacy. Um, obviously, we've got the GPs and the walk-in centres um, that people can access. And if you're not quite sure, you have got the 111 service um, mm. that can give you information um, either online or also uh, on the telephone. Right. Um, the, what, what is the fundamental difference, if you like, between a walk-in centre and a hospital, if you like? OK, so the walk-in centre is primary care. So that is mainly aimed at your minor injuries, your minor illness. So... If you've got a sore throat, uh, your tract infection, skin infection, 
um, an injury. Uh, you know, those are the things that we would generally see or expect to see within a walk-in centre. Whereas your hospitals is more your secondary care. So you're, you're more acute patients. So yeah, your chest yeah. pains, your shortness of breath. Um, those patients that need, you know, more acute intervention, um, they right. would be, you know, we'd expect them to attend the hospital. So coming back to the campaign, the Help Us Help You campaign, um, fundamentally, how, how would you describe that so people understand what that campaign is all about? How would you kind of word that? It's really sort of um, looking at the signs and symptoms that you've got um, and thinking, is that something I can manage at home? Um, you know, if you've got a bit of a sniffly nose, a bit of a cough, you might want to try some over-the-counter medications. If you're particularly feeling unwell with an illness, high fevers, general aches, then you might want to consider speaking to a pharmacist or even coming to the walk-in centre. Mm. There is a lot of information online, so if you do choose um, like NHS websites, you can find a lot of information on there, yeah. and that can also direct you on where's the best place to access care and yeah. advice for your symptoms at that time. Yeah. Um, so coming back to you know the, the, the kind of things that are going on over there and what have you at the moment, um, the, 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 the you've, you've highlighted the fact that you know it's operating at eight until at eight. Um, what what is typically well? I, I, I was just cla grasping my thoughts there because I had something in my mind that it went and it's come back to me now. Um, strep A, right? I I never heard of this okay. until last week when it came out, mm -hmm. and I'm led to believe that perhaps maybe the reason I didn't hear of it is because it was something that was kind of ca confined to medical history books as such. Mm -hmm. So w what can you tell us about that and how does a walk-in centre fit in with that? Okay, so strep A has always been around, um, and in general it just causes you know minor sort of um, symptoms, you know, maybe mild fever, mild sore throat, and generally most people will recover from this. Um, but there are instances where um, patients will become more unwell. Um, so the key things that you're looking out for is, you know, headaches, a rash, a red tongue. If you're concerned that you may have those signs and symptoms, then you would want to access uh, medical care. So either a 111 to direct you in the right direction or to attend a walk-in centre or your GP. Um, obviously, you know, if we believe that you've got um, an illness that requires treatment, then we are going to treat you with uh, antibiotics mm. because that's what helps uh, stop the spread of that infection and obviously you know parents are concerned at the moment you know and they do want their children checked out and that's absolutely fine is, is this causing an influx in people because yes, you know yeah, yeah. certainly we, it, over the last week we have certainly seen an, a, a massive increase in our numbers particularly in children um you know because parents are concerned you know they want to make sure that nothing is missed with their children and we do understand that um so you know, we are seeing a lot of uh, attendances with children with concerns um mm. with strep a um and really you know we don't want to put anyone off attending the walk-in centres. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't want to miss, you know, a child that potentially, you know, need treatment, you know. Um, and really our sort of message is that, you know, if you are attending our walk-in centres, you know, be sort of aware that, you know, there are going to be some long waits at times. And to try and be patient with us, we are trying to get through the, yeah. the patients as quickly as possible. We do assess patients initially when they attend to try and work out which child, you know, is more unwell than others and may need to be seen a little bit sooner. Mm. Um, you know, and that triage system, you know, is, is used in A&Es, you know, it, it does work. Um, but with the combination of, you know, the high volume of patients and, you know, obviously our ongoing staffing issues, there can be delays to that. But we yeah. will try and see every child you know, as quickly as possible. And if your child needs yeah. treatment, you know, we will You're provide gonna... that. What about the usual seasonal stuff that we get this time of year? Uh, how, how is that kind of showing up on the front line? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an increase in everything. Um, yeah. We have to remember we've gone through a very sort of chaotic sort of last two or three years yeah, with indeed, COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, people's general immune systems aren't what they would normally be because we haven't been exposed to all these sort of germs that we normally would have over the last couple of years. And so now this is our first winter where we're all out and about mixing with each other. Um, so we're, we're ex being exposed to more sort of viruses and bacteria. So more people are becoming yeah. unwell at this time of year than we probably would have expected yeah. in previous years. And, you know, certainly the COVID babies um, that were born during, during the, the pandemic, period, yeah. you know, um, they haven't had that exposure. So, all of a sudden they're being, right. you know, exposed to so when, many when different things. When are we with things. COVID at the moment? I mean, because it's almost as if, like, that last two years didn't happen because very few people seem to be talking about it. Is it still a problem for it's, you guys? It's still about. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely still about. Obviously, there's not as much testing um, as there was this time last year or the year before, uh, but we're certainly coming 
across patients that have got those signs and symptoms. We are certainly having patients that are presenting who are COVID positive. Um, and really the, you know, the, the advice is, this, you know, is the same, you know, good hand hygiene, you know, ideally yeah. wear a mask. You know, it's not um, something that's enforced particularly anymore, but it is something that is highly recommended, particularly if you're going to visit a place like a yeah. walk-in centre, because yeah. you are sitting in a waiting room with lots of other people mm. with lots of other symptoms, and you don't really know um, what you're being is, is exposed it a re- to. Is it a requirement in a walk-in centre that it's people not, put a mask on? Is it advisory? It's not a requirement. It's a high recommendation in yeah. terms. Of, it just keeps every you know everybody safe. Um, ideally, we want to keep our staff safe because we need them in work. Yeah, you need <laughs> so, them to be uh, fixing people. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's 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 a high recommendation. You know, we, yeah. we prefer you to wear a mask. Uh, we're all, you know, um, tending to wear masks, you know, the majority of the time that we're there. And that's, you know, just to keep everybody safe. Yeah. So the we've mentioned there about the seasonal things and that. Is there anything else? Or, or what would you say? You know, because obviously... I mentioned there about COVID and sometimes the, the lines are blurred between what may just be a, a flu mm-hmm. and what could be COVID. Um, and the testing isn't out there like it used to be. If someone was feeling a, a little bit under the weather, and I think it's coming back to what we mentioned earlier about just getting on the NHS website, which is a tremendous tool yep. for finding things out, really. I know you can go to all of these ones that the ads pop up, pop mm-hmm. up on, but I always say go to the NHS. Not everybody has access to... Um, you know, certainly people of a certain age, no disrespect, has access to the internet. So what would be the advice to uh, maybe people that don't use the internet? It's certainly use your 111 service. Yeah. Um, Is that automated or do you physically get to speak to somebody? In you do You do speak to someone. Mm. Um, and also, you know, if you're not sure, come to the walk-in centre if you're yeah. unable to get into your GP. One of the, you know, the things, you know, um, we have obviously people don't have uh, access to internet, but also English isn't their first language. Yeah. So, actually accessing a one 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 service or using the internet right. NHS sites, yeah. if English isn't your first language, then obviously that can be a barrier to accessing healthcare. So again, you know, we would you know advise if you can't get with your GP, come mm. to the walk-in centre. We do use um, Language Line, which um, allows us to get an interpreter right. over the phone. And in numerous languages, which is great, um, and, and so that you know they will be able to sort of access healthcare uh, yeah. and will be able to communicate, uh, you know, right. their okay. needs and you know any treatments we want to give them. Okay, we'll take a little bit of a break. Right then, so June Nash is with us. Uh, Joe Nash is with us. June Nash must be somebody I went to school with. That's all I can think of. <laughs> Sorry about that, Joe. Uh, so one of the interesting things, because, I mean, there are you, the services there. People go to the walk-in centre, and you encourage people to go there if they have something that is of concern to them. But at this time of year, what are the couple of, like, basic little things that you need in your toolkit at home or maybe practices that you need to be kind of carrying out to, to kind of mitigate the possibility that you might need to go to see the NHS? Um, so I think, you know, in your medicine cupboard at home, um, the basics like paracetamol, ibuprofen, maybe an antihistamine, um, you know, for your basics of like your cough, cold, sore throats, ear pain, um, a lot of the time symptoms can be managed with those over-the-counter remedies. Uh, for injuries, you know, like ice packs um, and having something, you know, knowing what to do, like, you know, if you burn yourself, yeah. to make sure that you do run it under cold water for a good sort of 15, 20 minutes, not just that what you should a do? couple of minutes well, I mean, and I'd then, burn myself and all then the run off to the walking <laughs> centre. Um, you know, it's those key things that will just help prevent yeah. that damage and, you know, in, I didn't realise it. I'm one of these people, yeah. you know, when I think, oh, God, I, I'm, I'm toasting, I'm, I'm putting some cheese on the grill, and I'm like, ah, and, I'm gonna, and you can, oh, I'll just put it on for a couple of minutes. Exactly, okay. yeah. So the longer yeah. you do it, the best yeah, it gets, Yeah, really. you want to prevent that sort of, you know, the continuous burning and damage, potential damage yeah. to the skin. Um, you know, we do have a lot of patients that come in, you know, that haven't tried those over-the-counter remedies, and uh, if symptoms are mild and, you know, and, you know, and you're well otherwise, uh, those are probably, you know, some of the first things we would advise yeah, you yeah. Uh, following examination. Um, obviously, you know, everybody's different. You know, some people have a really high pain threshold. Some people can't take certain medications, so it does limit what they can do at home. Um, but certainly, you know, you know, there is information out there. And, you know, if you try some of the sort of basic um, treatments, uh, you might find that your symptoms may resolve on yeah, their own yeah. so, you know certainly if they don't or they particularly get worse then absolutely you know come and access uh, yeah. you know healthcare. and I, I know you've got to be a bit of a broad church really where you are um, but you know, we, 
we were talking off air that, you know, people are really struggling, you know, with their general mental well-being, really, mm. aren't they? Because there are so many things, external things now, the cost of living crisis being Absolutely. one, uh, all of this kind of stuff. Um, is that something that a walk-in centre can help with, or is it better to kind of, like, to signpost it to someone who's a bit more specific in the area? I mean, primarily mental health isn't our forte and uh, it's not something that we would treat as nurse practitioners. Um, you know, mental health covers such a, you know, a massive um, array of, um, you know, uh, signs and symptoms uh, and diagnosis that it it's not the place of a walking centre to manage because a lot of these things yeah. are things that need to be sort it's of treated. It's a long-term yeah, it's a long, kind you know, of process you know, that as well, isn't it? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... In terms of sort of med- medicating uh, and uh, treating patients from that respect, that wouldn't be our forte. Certainly we can signpost you to uh, things like talking therapies, charities uh, in particular that are around uh, Liverpool yeah. that will help people with mental health. And we are certainly seeing lots of patients presenting with mental health because they're unsure of where to go. Mm. Or perhaps they're not registered with a GP. Um, you know, reasons for that, you know, some of the new students to Liverpool haven't registered with the GP. Uh, we have a lot of visitors, uh, asylum seekers, yeah. um, you know, and, you know, as you say, life is really mm-hmm. complex, really difficult. Um, you know, there are a lot of stresses that are affecting people's mental health yeah. and people who probably wouldn't, who normally think they have quite a robust and resilient uh, with their mental health so are, so are certainly take, finding it difficult. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we do our best, you know, we um, signpost to Talk Liverpool, which is a really good... Um, service for talking therapies um but you you do need to be registered with the gp to access those mm. um we work with certain charities like the first person project which is quite a new oh, charity Matty, yeah. um, and they've been brilliant uh, for some of our patients in the walking center yeah. who don't necessarily need to be started on sort of treatment but just having someone who can listen and, and that, can, and can give them that, some coping it? mechanisms yeah. to to help them manage you know the way that they're feeling at that time because you know, we're not going to turn anybody away. You know, if you would need someone to talk to, certainly, you, yeah. know, you know, present to a walk-in centre. Um, it's not our forte, but we will mm. certainly signpost you to people who can help you. Yeah. And, you know, that is, you know, another part of our service is that if we can't, you know, treat and manage your, your, your symptoms, mm. we'll refer you on to hopefully someone what, that can. What about nutrition? Because, I mean, you know, these days people, because we've just been highlighting, mm. you know, the cost of living and what have you, do you find that people are not eating perhaps maybe as healthy as they should be? And that in itself could prevent, you know, a trip to the doctor. Absolutely. I mean, you know, nutrition is really key, uh, you know, not just for your, your, your physical health, but your, for your mental health. And, you know, if people aren't able to afford, you know, sort of good sort of nutritious and well-balanced meals or they're skipping meals particularly, you know, it's going to have an effect on every other yeah. aspect of your life. You know, your ability to concentrate, to focus, yeah. uh, you know, to your ability to carry out, you know, your, your daily tasks, you know, it's so important, um, mm. you know, and I do feel, you know, it's incredibly hard for, you know, yeah. so many families and individuals out there. To get it right. One of the, the one of the key elements for me is, is water, and I don't drink enough water, and I've <laughs> noticed when I, when I have been sensible enough to do it, you notice a difference in yourself. Yeah. You're more alert, yeah. your, your skin's better, all of these kind of things are sometimes the most basic and simple things that you can kind of add to your life the things that can kind of, you know, keep you in the tip-top condition you Absolutely. need to be in. Uh, well, listen, Joel, thank you so much for coming in. Much appreciated. If people want to find out more about the uh, the campaign, Help Us Help You, is there a website that accompanies that? Yeah, you can go to the Mercy Care website and all the information is there. There's information about all our walking centres. Um, we have got eight walking centres uh, in total that cover the Sefton, Liverpool and Nosley areas. So the um, contact numbers, opening times are all on there. Yeah. Um, so you know, people uh, can okay. hopefully uh, uh, attend. And will you will you be in over the Christmas period? Does Christmas kind of one of these things? Oh, Christmas! What's that? We don't get those. <laughs> How does it work for you in there? Uh, well, we are a three hundred sixty-five year service, you know, yeah. uh, day it's service. The, yeah. So we are open every day. Um, all our sites will be open on Christmas yeah. Day and over the Christmas New Year period. So obviously, um, yeah. if people are unsure where to go we um are there obviously like gps will be closed uh and, and certain other services like dentists and stuff you know will mm. be closed if you're not sure the walking center is there we are doing our best uh to, to help everybody um we are human at the end of the day um and we do get tired yeah. um 
all people, I can ask people is, you have know, got to appreciate we're there. that. It's an they? open service. You can walk in um, if you're, you have genuine concerns and, you know, our staff will do our very best to treat you. Just appreciate that it's yeah. really busy Can't at the do it moment. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, there uh, are long waiting times, um, yeah. um, but we will get to you as, as soon as we can. Right. Joe, thank you very much indeed for that. Pleasure, All right, then. you are you. listening to Liverpool Live. It is 11.33. We're going to be talking about knife crime in just a few minutes' time. Spotting music before that uh, from the Blow Monkeys next.